you. Uh, Greek Prime Minister George Papandreou has survived local polls and dropped his threat to call an early general election. The ruling socialists lost significant ground to the opposition. However, Papandreou said the Greek people had shown that they wanted his government to continue with its austerity drive. Tomorrow we will continue our work, remaining dedicated to the great challenge to the salvation of the country and to creating a better country with a viable economy in which we choose our own fate, far from supervision and economic dependence. George Papandreou, then, the uh, Greek Prime Minister. Well, uh, George Nikotiedis, uh, Culture and Tourism Deputy Minister for Greece, is with us in the studio, uh, and we can get some useful reaction, I think, to how this election has gone. Good morning, sir. Good Thank morning. you for being with us. High stakes game going into the elections, with uh, Mr. Papandreou describing them as a referendum on the austerity measures. Did, I... uh, did the government pass? Yes, uh, we did overpass and actually it was the opposition who started with the referendum because this was a very big change in our regional elections, in our municipality elections. For first time, we really decentralize the system. We give authority and powers to the regions, to the municipalities. So this was the real stake and the opposition started by bringing up a referendum uh, political meaning and uh, the people didn't follow that. The people said no, continue and this is the message we bring now. We continue, we're to go on with our changes, we will do changes everywhere and if I may say we're doing changes in the tourist area also as we're doing everywhere else. Now I know this, this is sort of outside of your portfolio specifically but it, it's been pointed out that the collection of taxes is still half of what it should be at this point, that some of the legislation related to breaking up the professions has still not really come through. There are other bits of legislation that, re that, that there's a lot of foot dragging on at this stage. Are these going to be addressed now that you feel you've had a vindication from Actually, the Greek people? Actually, it is uh, logical when you collect more taxes than people having reactions because they were not uh, in a way of life where you have to pay. We, that, that, when we say we go to change everything, this is what is going to take place in Greece. Uh, we have changed the law, tax law. Uh, now for the first time, people are really paying taxes. Uh, now for the first time, uh, you see uh, lawyers, doctors who have uh, never declared not even 10% uh, from what they have in uh, their bank accounts. Sure, but, but, it, but it's not enough, is it? I mean, it's, what, 3.6% higher for the 10 months of the year. It should have been 8.7%. So it's, it's not coming in as fast as the government needs it to, as, to meet the targets. As far as our strategy is concerned, it is coming in. We are in the process of uh, reaching the goal. And what is uh, the real question now is if we will manage to receive uh, investment, which is uh, the real stake we have to put every day in our uh, agenda because now we need investment now we need development collecting money collecting money is not enough to get through no. you have to go with development also so, so minister how do the priorities look for the next sort of six months do you think you're going to get ahead of the game particularly as it relates to where the ecb and the imf are at i think we will go ahead i would think we will avoid to take more measures I think that the message of the people was clear. I understand that the people are suffering. I understand that the people do not want these me measures. They would wish not to have them, but they know they are necessary, mm -hmm. and that's why they give vote, that's why they trust today's government, and that's why I believe we will go ahead, of course with protests, of course with strikes, but uh, we respect uh, the right for strike, we respect the right for protest. Mm -hmm. Minister, how, for, for people outside Greece, it's difficult sometimes to understand what the headline measures that the government introduces, what impact that has on the ground. And getting a handle on that is probably pretty crucial in then deciding in your own mind whether you think the plan is deliverable. So how much tougher is life getting for the average Greek citizen? I do not think that for the average Greek citizen the measures will be tougher. I believe that the measures will be tougher for those who are not on the average scale of the economic uh, uh, 
uh, level and uh, they never pay taxes although as I said before they have lots of money in the banks in the bank accounts and they have been managing to avoid always paying taxes for first time the system that's will on the work. tax front but on the on the on the cuts that the government are making okay we have to make cuts uh, and uh, if you take uh, my ministry uh, I see every day that we still have cuts that we can take on the public sector because uh, uh, for instance, if I make a trip abroad as a minister, I do not have to take 15 people with me. That's what has been done for years and years. I only take two, the necessary people that I really need. And this is a, a, a small example of what cuts we're making. There are more and more cuts. You don't have to use your car during the night. The state's car is not your car. It's the state's car, and you have to use it for the state's job. I mean, if I go out on a private basis, one night I will mm. use my car, I shouldn't use the car of uh, the state. These are small examples but all this small, small, small create a big scale and that's how we cut public You need care. to um, find some industries which uh, that can be the national champions. Your own department is a national champion, uh, Greek tourism is key but the problem is Greek tourism revenues are going backwards. Uh, in the first nine months of this year or eight months of this year, sorry, revenues were down 7.3% despite actually footfall increasing by around about 1.5%. Uh, how do you take it to the next level? Apparently your central bank has been saying you need to make it more competitive actually and actually en enhance the product how are you going to do that? Because it is one thing that Greece can turn around and say, we do tourism pretty well. I absolutely agree with you. We were never competitive. Uh, we never actually had a strategy for tourism. Tourism came to us. The people came to us. We never went out to the markets. I think that this is the first time that we're really planning a strategy which will feed to the Greek country. And what is that? We are planning of having 52 weeks tourism. We're planning to have tourism all over Greece. We're planning to, to bring in uh, publicity and uh, help for investment, all the alternative ways of tourism, climbing, uh, religious tourism, cultural tourism, gastronomy tourism. All this Greece could, could do great. Last night I received the award for the Museum of Acropolis, which I've was, been. yes, Fantastic. which was identified by the Association of Tourist uh, it's, it's Writers wonderful, sir. in Something's Great missing Britain. from it, though, sir. As, uh, it's missing, <laughs> and this is... So, yeah, something's this missing is, from your museum <laughs> in <laughs> Athens. <laughs> this, is, and this is exactly what I said in my message. And I think you've got space for it. No, no, I'm not here for that. I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> but I said yesterday, uh, when I uh, expressed our thanks for this award, I said, uh, we thank you, and I think that you really open now the door for uniting the marbles, because when you declare the museum as the best museum of the, on the, in the world, you actually admit that this museum, of course, can take care and have The only thing I complained models. about, sir, is there was no audio tour. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the audio tour. Yeah. But, uh, but really, it's a great museum. It's a museum worth only it's by itself to visit Athens, to visit Greece. It's uh, an absolutely beautiful Just, place. Uh, for, for viewers who are not perhaps as engaged in this this difficulty Anglo between the UK and we Greece. We stole the Elgin marbles. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what the minister says. No, 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 no. I never said you stole it. <laughs> let's let's not start that. a diplomatic <laughs> incident on this uh, episode uh, of Sport Box. But um, let's just come back to a serious point for a moment, if I might, Minister. Um, a series of failed attacks on embassies and European leaders sort of hooked back into Greek anarchist movements. Um, obviously, the, the images that have been relayed around the world have not been the ones that you wanted to have been relayed about what a wonderful tourist destination Greece is. So what can you do practically to change people's view now? Because when they start to think about Greece, it's not those wonderful uh, lagoons and as, azure seas. It's the, the the, the bombings, the, the, the protests, the demonstrations, the people that unfortunately were victims during okay, this period. First of all, I think that we should bring into public voices like yours who just identified this uh, 
last incidents with uh, the parcels or so the explosives as an anarchist movement and not as any terrorist movement, which is the reality. It, is, it has nothing to do with terrorism. It's an anarchist movement. It's a tiny anarchist movement. It has been over controlled within two days. Uh, people were captured immediately. We have secured that all the parcels would be under control. Our Minister of Foreign Affairs the same day spoke with all the embassies in Greece and took care of everything. Uh, they explained it how they should take measures for protection. So I understand that we do have a problem over there, but uh, it is uh, our responsibility to make the people believe that uh, our country is a very secure country. And let me t t tell you this. If you go for tourism in Greece, where would you go mostly? You go to the islands, you go to Crete, you go to Corfu. Most of the British people go to Corfu. You go to Kos, you go to Rhodes, you go to Cephalonia. I don't know how many people would go in Athens. We love them to come in Athens because actually even in Athens, what happens is what happens in Rome, what happens in Paris, what happens in all the large uh, capitals of uh, Europe. So I can guarantee uh, it's a very secure country. There is no problem whatsoever. No tourist in uh, Greece had any problem with uh, uh, terrorism or actions uh, from demonstrations and things like this. When I went on my last holiday to Greece, I had a wonderful time, but I did remember thinking that it was quite expensive compared to probably my expectation of what it was going to be I like. I don't think you were there last year, were you? <laughs> probably, no, it wasn't okay, last year, it wasn't okay. last year. But, I mean, it, do you ever wish that you didn't have the euro? It would make uh, actually, life simpler actually, for la you? Actually, last year, we had the best relation with value for money, uh, I think, in the world. 40% reductions by the hoteliers, excellent uh, prices, uh, and they will continue like that. So this is one probably of the most basic reasons for which British people should come back in Greece because we're losing the British market. Uh, for the last five years it goes down and down and actually there is no reason from uh, the side of the British people. Uh, th there is a reason from the side of the British people. They know why. Probably because happy, some things happen the way you just described them. Now prices are going down. Now value for money is an excellent position in Greece. So we invite people and we would show that and they will understand and realize that. Yeah, uh, well, I'd love to be able to say it was a Greece issue, but uh, we have our own austerity problem <laughs> right now in the UK. I absolutely understand which, uh, that and uh, this is actually a European problem and this is something that should be faced by totally by the European countries. I understand, yeah. I heard about the cuts in Great Britain also yeah. and that's why we have go to go even lower in prices just to secure that we will have the British you've, people. You've talked a lot about the British, of course, the Germans are one of the other major uh, groups of tourists to Greece. The relationship has been a little fractious over the last few months and, and various politicians have said outrageous things like Greece should sell off its islands to fund its debt. Do, do you just, just dismiss that these things or that does, that, does that wind you up as much? As it within, other people within two months that has changed within two months of work by uh, our minister mr Eurolanos, by me by the secretary of the ministry we went all over europe we went all over germany i visited six cities in germany and uh, we came to the conclusion that the minister of tourism of germany together with me announced that, uh, a committee for, from both parliaments to support greek tourism and invited germans to visit greece uh, so I think that this is over. Now everybody understands that we're a secure country. We're not a country that spends the money just like that. We want to work. We were just the first ones to face the economic crisis. It's been a real pleasure having you on the program, sir, and hopefully we can catch up uh, on another day. Thank you very Good much. To see it was you. a pleasure uh, for me. George uh, Nikitiadis, uh, Culture and Tourism Deputy Nikitiadis. Minister. Nikitiadis. I know it's Nikitiadis. <laughs> <laughs> that's, at least, that's at least one thing. Yeah. Can I just say I've been to Greece as well since my, <laughs> my colleagues here have made that point, and it was. You're wonderful. all invited by me with a nice fun trip, okay? As long as I get your name right. Um, <laughs> we're going to take uh, a swift break. Um, uh, the uh, Minister here for the World Travel Market week in London and no doubt we'll be talking a little bit more about that as we go through the week here. Uh, coming up live in Mumbai as President Obama and India's Prime Minister show a united front vowing to fight protectionism after signing $10 billion worth of big ticket business deals. We'll be right back everybody.